we've had green woodpecker, grey partridge, buzzard, ravens, badger. A lot of inquisitive deer come up to the camera, literally nose on the camera. I guess those moments where we open up the folder and see the photos is, is amazing. Some people argue that wood pigeons are quite pretty up close, but until you see a turtle dove, the best looking of the doves. I'm trying not to be too kind of shallow, but yeah, they are. <laughs> You've seen birds like wood pigeons and collared doves and, and stock doves. All of those are common around gardens and parks and farmland. A turtle dove is slightly smaller, kind of blackbird size, lovely kind of tortoise shell back on it, and then a kind of buff colored front, and it's very pretty. If you hear them, you know you've heard one, almost like a very soft purr. They're our only migratory dove. So it's kind of around June that they arrive up from sub-Saharan Africa. So they travel over Western Europe into Southeast UK, and then they leave September, October, and then, yeah, do the reverse journey again. I think all migration's amazing. It's nice to uh, work on a project where we're helping a migratory bird. During that migratory journey, they faced a lot of challenges. They were really a bird that was gonna go extinct if we didn't do anything. If you're helping them out in the route that they're traveling on, then you need to have the right areas ready for when they arrive. Then scrubland for breeding, good habitat for them for, for nesting. And then they like to have a water source and then also a food source. So the food source is the one that we've been focused on in this project. That's a lot of the time when we set up our trail cameras is there's supplementary feeding going on, so there's seed going onto the ground. So we know we're attracting other birds and stuff there, but hopefully the right kind of food is gonna attract turtle doves there as well. When I found out about this operation, Turtle Dove, it had this kind of technical aspect to it, and I thought Reese might like this as well. So I just kind of floated the idea to him and said, oh, you know, I've got this project, do you, do you fancy getting involved with it? And it's been great, you know, I've been, he's been really enthusiastic, which as everyone knows, getting enthusiasm out of a teenager is like, is difficult. I've really enjoyed working with him in this, and I didn't know how it was going to go to start with. I thought either he's going to be like, this is horrendous, like this is really boring, but it's not been like that at all. This RSPV work has definitely given us more time to sort of talk and hang out with each other, which is definitely really nice. Yeah. The early mornings of going out to put the camera out and going to see these pieces of land which you don't normally see, he's enjoyed that. And meeting these landowners, that's a really nice aspect of the project as well. When we meet a lot of the people that own this sort of land and are doing the work, they're definitely a lot older than me and I seem to be quite shocked that they've got a 16-year-old coming to do all this work. I don't think I find it any less interesting than them. Getting involved in these kind of projects has made him think, oh, actually, this is quite interesting. You never know where it's going to lead him. So at the start of the project, we're given a contact by the RSPB. We basically go meet with the landowner, have a little chat with them, tell them that I want to come and bring a camera out, put it on their land where they think they've got turtle dove activity. We'll go out with a, a stake and a hammer, hammer the stake into the ground, attach the camera, make sure the battery pack is inserted. The battery pack sometimes does pop out of the bottom. So you end up going back a week later and there's been no pictures recorded, which is frustrating. <laughs> Switch the camera on and then hope for the best. Keep your fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> Because the cameras have no viewing screen on them, you don't know what's on there. The wait in the week thinking about what you're going to see and not really knowing what's next is definitely the best bit I think about it. Normally there's thousands of photos. Because they're all open in thumbnails, first of all, you can sort of, you're hoping that what you might have seen is a turtle dove, but you're not sure until you go through them individually. Uh, there's no getting around it, that's what you have to do. I must admit, sometimes I've left him to go through uh, and clear out all the ones where it's just nothing in them, you know. I'll go off and do something else. I come in for the turtle dove glory at the end. <laughs> we get some really lovely photos of deer and another wildlife, which is exciting to see as well. And we've had pictures of green woodpecker, we've had grey partridge, buzzard, which was really cool, ravens, badger. The cameras work at night, you get another view into a world that you don't often see, you know. So we've had a lot of inquisitive deer come up to the camera, literally nose on the camera. Yeah, we've had all kinds really, yeah. <laughs> There's a spreadsheet that goes alongside the photos and then we record every single all wildlife and all bird life. Rhys probably won't mind me saying that I'm the kind of better birder out of the two of us. You know, he's very much learning. Still have to say it as my dad, but I think I'm catching up, spotting things quicker. My eyesight's probably better than his. So, so it's a test for me then we're going through and he's like, oh, what's that? And then I have to kind of look and test my birding skills. 
If you've got turtle dove activity, you record what the turtle doves are doing in that picture, whether they're feeding or whether they're flying. In our second deployment, we had around 270 photos with turtle doves in them. Obviously, the one that you really want is evidence of juveniles. Yeah, that's the one you want because then you've got evidence of breeding them, the kind of golden ticket. You know this landowner is waiting to find out if there's been anything on their land. That's the bit I look forward to actually. But that must be exciting as well to see you know, how their land develops if they're rewilding. And I really look forward to being able to send them some evidence of the stuff that we found and they're always really pleased. Even if it's not turtle doves, which is why they've got involved in the project. When you're kind of worried about the state of the environment and the state of the world in general, doing little things like this which give you that feeling of, of hope, it's great. And I feel really positive about doing, doing these kind of projects. Driving around or walking around before, you sort of think that not much is out there really, because you sort of think all the amazing wildlife is in other countries and stuff. But doing this conservation work made me see there's a lot more sort of interest in wildlife than the UK than I thought there was. When I've been out and talking to landowners, you hear a lot of them who've you know been working the land for decades say that 10, 20, 30 years ago, they would be inundated with turtle doves on their land, they'd have like 20, 30 turtle doves. It would be great if in five or 10 years time that that's how things are again. That would be the ultimate goal, I think, yeah. If they could be as common as seeing a collared dove or a wood pigeon, then, then that would be amazing, yeah. The messaging used to be the a bird on the brink and now we've seen like birds, uh, turtle doves numbers recovering a little bit. The RSPB have shown that what they're doing has helped the numbers to start to bounce back. Well, the project needs more volunteers to get involved in doing the kind of stuff that, that I've been doing. The more that we can prove to landowners that the kind of things that the RSPB are suggesting you do on your land, like providing scrubland, providing water sources, doing supplementary feeding, all those things can help a bird that's been really struggling. The other parts, like providing the equipment, that's when you need you know, funding from the public, yeah. Turtle doves aren't just for Christmas, they need our help all year round. Your support provides vital help for them, so please support if you can.